So you may have gotten a storage upgrade, either bought it for yourself or got it as a gift and are wondering how to install it. Well, today we're gonna go over that. We're gonna go over the things that you're gonna need and all of the steps to get it into your computer. Now, the first thing that we're gonna go over are the different types. So there are hard drives and there are solid state drives. So first off, you have hard drives. They are a magnetic disc that spins around and an arm goes ahead and reads the data off that disc. They've been around for a very long time. They're very inexpensive but they are quite a bit slower and they are much larger. Another big downside for hard drives is that they are more prone to damage because if you drop them, it can cause damage to those spinning disks and cause corruption on the drive. Solid state drives, however, use flash memory or flash chips to store all your data. Therefore, they can be quite a bit smaller. They can be in different form factors and significantly faster. Solid state drives have actually been a huge component in making computers a lot smaller, especially with laptops. They could be much thinner and much smaller because of one of these new form factors. Now, if you look here, there are different form factors within hard drives and solid state drives. So here is one that you would probably see if you're a little bit older. Uh, no offense, uh, I'm one of those people. This is a three and a half inch hard drive. Now. These are very inexpensive. They have huge capacities. They can go all the way up past 14 terabytes now. Um, and they're very simple in design. They have four mounting holes on the bottom and six along the sides. You have your SATA power and your SATA data. And again, quite large. Now we also have these very small two and a half inch, typically laptop sized hard drives. Um, other than that though, very similar. We have mounting holes on the side, only two on each side. So four in total and then four on the bottom. But again, the same connectors, you have your power and your data. Now with solid state drives, this is also a two and a half inch, almost the exact same form factor as the hard drive. You also have the same mounting holes with the, the four on the sides and the four on the bottom. You have the power and the data but this, you can mount it absolutely anywhere. Um, you don't even have to technically secure it down into your case. You could leave it loose or taped or what have you, and you won't cause any damage to it. Um, but that is a two and a half inch. And then we have M.2 drives, which are becoming much more popular within the last four years. Now within M.2, there are a lot of differences. There's M.2 NVMEs, which is what we have here. There are M.2 SATA, and then there's M SATA. Also within those, there are different sizes. So here we have the 2280, which is the most common form factor right now. Um, but we also have the 2240, which is very common in laptops and in the Steam Deck. And it's 2240. That's how the dimensions work. And this one is 22 and 80. Now, most drives are going to be an M key um, like this. Um, but every once in a while, you may find a B plus M key drive. Those are usually gonna be the SATA drives. Now for installation, installation is very, very straightforward, um, but depending on which type you get, the installation is gonna be quite different. So for example, if we're gonna go ahead and do a three and a half inch drive, the installation of this drive is gonna be entirely dependent on the case you get. Now, many cases will have, what are these um, quick install caddies? And all you have to do is line up the holes on the side with the holes on the caddy like so and then what you would do is you would go ahead and slide this into your case it would clip in and you go ahead and plug in your connectors on the back and you're all done now some cases you may have to do the screws on the side some cases you may have to do the screws on the bottom and with these you can even further secure it with screws on the bottom if you wanted now with uh, two and a half inch drives they can be mounted here with those with those same four holes um, they can be mounted onto the side they can have special mounts in your case with, the, with these form factors, excluding the M.2s, the way that these are gonna be mounted are entirely dependent on your case, so make sure you check your case manual on how these are supposed to be installed. When installing the three and a half inch or the two and a half inch SATA drives, you're also gonna need a SATA data cable. These will also typically be in your motherboard box. Um, you can either have a right angle one like this or a straight one like this. Um, they will go into the data connector on the drive and then typically your motherboard will have a bunch of SATA ports, either right angled coming out the side, or they will be facing upwards. These ones are right angled on the side. 
You'll typically have four to six. This one actually has eight. This is a very expensive motherboard, so it has quite a bit more, um, but you would plug it in there. M.2 drives, one of the reasons they've gotten so popular is because of the simplicity of how easy they are to install, how small they are, um, and their increasing uh, drop in cost. On most motherboards, you will have two slots for an M.2 drive. There's usually one very close to the CPU and there's usually one a little bit closer to the bottom. The one closest to the CPU is usually gonna be directly connected to the CPU um, socket. The one on the bottom is usually gonna be connected to the CPU through the chipset. So inherently it will be a little bit slower, not anything significantly noticeable, um, but you may notice. So typically I will suggest you install to this one first for the reason of speed, but also for the reason of convenience, because once you have a graphics card installed in here and an air cooler installed on top, it's gonna be very difficult to get to this port compared to this one. So getting this slot populated earlier is usually beneficial. So as you can also see, mine here has heat uh, sinks that are pre-installed onto the, the motherboard. So you have to take those off. And this one's nice because they have capacitive screws. And go ahead and take that off and you'll go ahead and you will see the M.2 slot here. Now, typically your case will also come with some screws um, in order to install these because the screws won't be installed here. Um, take a look at your instruction manual for your motherboard. It'll tell you how they're supposed to be installed for your motherboard specifically, but typically you will have these extra screws and M.2s are extremely easy to install. You go ahead and slot it in at an angle like so. You want it so that you do not see the pins anymore. You should bring it down and it should slot around a little indent on the screw mount there. Now, as you may be able to tell, this is made for the 2280 size uh, NVMe drive. But if we have something smaller like the 2240, we don't have anywhere to mount it. This screw hole is much too low and you don't wanna be bending your drive. In this baggie, you may see some standoffs here. And what we would do is we would take one of those standoffs, screw it into here, and then screw our drive into that. But if we wanted to go ahead and install our um, M.2 drive here for the 2280, we're gonna go ahead and slot it in, bring it down. And with the way that this motherboard works is actually the um, heat sink screw would go into here. So I don't have to actually install another screw. Um, the heatsink screw goes in there. And the heatsink, usually if you do have them, they will have this little piece of plastic. So you do have to remove that before you uh, put it onto the drive. And that allows the thermal compound to interface with your drive. And then you go ahead and you would just make sure that you're lining everything up. And that was upside down. And we would go ahead and screw that down and secure it into place with our drive. Now, let me go ahead and show you how simple some of the two and a half inch or three and a half inch mounts can be depending on your case. And then I will show you how to get everything set up in Windows because there are a few steps you have to do there. So here we are, this is my NR200 and the mounting system for the SSDs on the front of this case are extremely simple and I love it for that. So what you end up doing is you end up screwing these little mounts into the bottom of the SSD and then they go ahead and they slide into these little rubber grommets here and they hold the drives in place. Makes it super easy. So what I can do is I can go ahead and plug in my connector. So as I mentioned before, we have one data, which is what these SATA data connectors are for. And then we have the SATA power connectors. So the SATA power connectors look like this. If your power supply is modular, then you will have to ensure that you plug this into the power supply first and then have these cables out. If it's non-modular or semi-modular, um, you will not have to do that. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take it and you wanna go ahead and plug it in. They are keyed so you can't make any mistakes. You wanna plug that in and you wanna make it so, so that you don't see the pins uh, visible on the bottom here. And then we can go ahead and mount it. Now this makes everything super, super simple. And I can show you because I have the other drive to install here. And to show you how simple this is, I'm gonna get the second drive installed in let's say less than 30 seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our data, grab our drive, 
plug the data in, plug our power in, and get that lined up with our grommets. And we're all good to go. Super simple. With this case, our motherboard is also an ITX. So one of our M.2 ports is actually on the back here. So we're gonna get that M.2 from earlier. We're gonna install that. What I typically like to do is if possible, I will pre-install all of the M.2 screws onto the motherboard so that I don't lose them. They are very, very small, very easy to lose. We go ahead and get that slotted in. So in on an angle, bring it down until it lines up. Having a magnetic screwdriver for this makes everything quite a bit easier, especially if you have large fingers like I do. Let me go ahead and get that mounted. Now we'll get Windows booted and I will show you how to get that drive sorted in Windows. So if you go ahead and jump into Windows and you go to your file explorer and you notice that your new drive isn't appearing, don't be afraid. This is because you haven't initialized the drive assigned a partition and a drive letter yet. So what you wanna end up doing is you wanna go and search for the uh, create and format hard disk partitions. This is gonna open up the disk management. If you open this up, if it's a brand new drive, it's likely gonna ask you to initialize that drive. If you end up having to do the initialization, just choose GPT and get it initialized. And then you will end up seeing a black bar like this that says unallocated. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna right click on that. We're gonna do new simple volume, press next, press next. You can assign any letter that you want to it. So we're gonna do E in this case. Then you go ahead and you're gonna want it to be NTFS default, and then you can name it whatever you want. So we're gonna call this one Team SSD. We're gonna do next and finish. Now, once that's done, you will see it appear here. If we go back here, you will now see that it is appearing within our Windows Explorer. Now, if your drive did not appear in the disk management, recheck all your connections, make sure that you installed the M.2 or the SATA drives correctly. If you really need to, you can go ahead and jump into the BIOS to see if it's being detected. But if it's not being detected in disk management, then it's probably not being detected in the BIOS either. So uh, what I would usually suggest is double check the connections, unplug them entirely and plug them all back in and try it again. And that's it. Your new drive is ready to go, ready to be used for whatever you want to use it for. And it's really that simple. Now, I hope this video helped you. If it did, I'd really appreciate if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thoughts Live and Step Back, and thank you for watching the end of this video. If you want to see any of my other videos on computer tips or how to get things set up, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Friday.